All right, everyone. It's been a while since I've been on this channel. And while I've been away, I have been trying to live. To live as a 29-year-old millennial in a world that is upside down. In a world where so many antichrists are abound, so many liars, so many deceptions, so many psyops are running around senselessly, destroying the minds of people or making people so tired that they choose to disengage from all news, all information, disengage from anything that is offering somewhat of an answer. And that's been me. I've been examining a lot, not a lot, but most of the platforms or the speakers I used to watch who would give me information about what's happening in the world. And all their diagnoses or their observations has been rooted in a biased narrative. And we as Christians, people can point the finger that, hey, you too are biased. You examine the world with a biblical lens. So be it. But we are able to be objective also, right? But these particular people that I'm talking about, yes, they examine the world with a Bible lens, but their bias is forcing, in a way, things to move faster than what they actually are. You see, they are only talking about things that would confirm their bias. And I am, I'm tired of this because I remember when Obama was president and back then I was not a believer, right? I was not a believer, but I remember people saying that Obama was the antichrist, right? I didn't understand this. And there would be many, many people talking, speaking with assurance that indeed Obama is the Antichrist. Not a Antichrist, but the Antichrist. All the things and policies that Obama permitted, right, went along with the bias that we have as to this is what the Antichrist would do. Fine. But that did not mean that he is the Antichrist. Then I began to go back in time as well then I realized that, wait a minute, literally every single decade, there is a leader that people think is the Antichrist every decade. And I found myself upset, upset that how is it that those who are much older than me, how can they forget that 10 years ago they believed that was the Antichrist. Now they believe this is the Antichrist. How can they forget this? My theory as to why Christians can forget. Why 10 years ago they said Obama was the Antichrist or so-and-so was the Antichrist. I think they forget because they are desperate to leave this world. Your desperation to leave this world isn't going to help anyone. Instead, it's going to destroy people's faith, it's going to destroy people's understanding of the world, objectively so. Because this desperation to leave, right, creates a new level of bias where everything that is observed, it has to conform into what you personally want things to actually mean. And I don't, I don't like that anymore. I truly believe that Trump must be the Antichrist. Everything happening, the whole 2020 stuff, the, the, the jabs and everything. I thought he called himself the father of the jab and yada, yada, yada. Surely this must be it. Blah, 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 blah. And I was listening, of course, to senior Christians who held this narrative. Senior Christians who are so desperate to leave this world, so near their death, while the rest of us have to live here. And no one can point a finger and say, yeah, bro, I think you're starting to love the world. There's nothing to love in this world. The Lord said, do not love the world. 
Whoever loved the world loves the world. The love of the Father is not in him. Whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. The world is not our friend, nor does it have any treasure that's actually going to last forever. Right? There are liabilities, things get stolen, you obtain gold and silver this way, you're going to have to continue doing it that way or develop new ways. It's just ridiculous. What I'm sick and tired of is that there is no direction. Christians don't know what to believe right now. You can say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Well, that's all you need, but you don't know what to believe about the current situation we're in. And I am not, I'm no longer going to speak definitively that I know exactly what's happening right now. I don't. I no longer care about what's happening in the world and the geopolitic stuff. It doesn't matter. I see things as WWE now. This whole situation with Trump was supposedly shot, right? The attempted assassination, that is complete bogus. You watch the video, you can hear. You can hear that gun go off. That, that, that does not sound like a gun. That sounded like a firecracker, some other fireworks. That was not a gun. That was not a rifle. And the fact that people believe it is, they are desperate to believe it. They want to believe it. They want to believe it because they have nothing else to live for. They want to believe it because by doing so, it's going to give them a new purpose because they are living without one. They cannot build anything. They have nothing to look forward to tomorrow on this earth. So it is better that they all rally together and scream for Trump's sake and go out with a bang, right? Desperate for a war or the other Christians desperate for this being the Antichrist so we can be raptured out of here. If the rapture was going to happen, it should have happened in 2020. If uh, this decade was the last, it, it should have all ended in 2020, 2021, but it didn't. Literally everything that is required to put the whole world under lockdown already happened. The infrastructure, the drones, the terminators, the terminator dogs that can float around your house burn your house if you step one foot outside. They have all this technology. They used it in China, but now everybody's been set free again. Many, including myself, thought 2030 must be the second coming, but it can't be because now it's 2024 and the rapture would have to take place seven years prior. So it ain't happening. Not this decade, not this lifetime. I personally think there has to be a thousand years left. There has to be a thousand years left. And it won't matter because I'll be long dead by then. But it's only been 2,000 years, right? Isn't it after three days the Lord rose? So it's only been two. And one day is like a thousand years to the Lord. So regardless of what we think... Regardless of how we see things, it is just not how the Lord sees things. It's not because the Tower of Babel, we already are living somewhat in that generation. Everybody can communicate, Google Translate and all that, right? Everybody's becoming one and singular in the dysfunctional, woke mindset. They already are, right? I mean, there is so many years left, but I'm just making this video to express my frustration with the Christians and how many of us were believing that it is soon to be the end because a lot of evangelical pastors, right? A lot of Protestant pastors were saying that. And yes, they provided the facts and, um, their findings for their reasons why, and it did make perfect sense. But I realize now that it doesn't matter even if it does make sense because we don't know the timeline. We don't. And what actually matters, it is, yes, understand prophecy. It's vital, but also understand how to live 
the young people, especially young Westerners, young Europeans who call themselves Protestant, they don't know how to live their lives. They don't know. They have no direction and none of the elders, none of the elders have given practical advice on how a young person is supposed to navigate through this messed up life. All the pastors were saying it's all meaningless, it's all pointless, we're going to be raptured anyway, uh, everything's going to be destroyed anyway, the devil owns everything anyway. So wh what? What are we supposed to do then? Just sit? Just sit and wait to die? This is not possible if you're a young person. People are socially stunned, right? They are development castrated by some of these uh, hardcore rapture Christians, totally obliterating people's belief or people's need or people's sense of reality that tomorrow they must wake up and go to work. Tomorrow they must wake up and live their lives. It has only been a bombardment of negative news, negative news, negative news. Trump did that, Putin doing this, Zelensky that, Biden that, enough is enough. Every elder is guilty of using mainstream media as nothing but dopamine. You have not been using it to properly assess what is going on. But it has only been a crutch. A crutch used to give yourself excitement in the stagnation that you find yourself in. But guess what? Young people who are stagnant, they go to drugs, they go to the liquor store, they think about hanging themselves. Ever since I was born again, for the past seven years, I have only wanted two things that will not happen. And these two things were instilled by me by all, every single pastor that I have watched. All of them are guilty of this. I've only wanted two things, to die or to be raptured. Both are not going to happen anytime soon. I ain't dying anytime soon. I, I just know I'm not. Nobody being raptured anytime soon either. And because I've been fixated on just either dying or escaping this world, I neglected how to live in this world. Some will say, hey, we're told not to have selfish ambition as it is written. There is nothing selfish, no ambitious to want to live in this world sustainably. These are the things missing. This is what no one hears. Not, not a single soul. Are we supposed to go to church, sing and scream at the top of our lungs and sweat and fall to the ground like some crazy African churches? That is not worship. That is just a dopamine fiasco. That is just madness. It's nothing but madness. How? Do we live? I will tell you how I've been living thus far. But what triggered me coming to this channel and expressing this frustration is that for the past two weeks or so, I suddenly felt like there's no point in me waking up in the morning. I don't know what triggered it. I don't know how it happened. Because thus far, things were going just fine, right? The, what I chose to commit myself to while I'm on this world is to build. And what I've been building is a comic book company with these Americans that I encountered. And we're creating stories that are meant to inspire children, young adults, and teenagers. This has been my ambition and it is not a selfish ambition 
but it's an ambition that gave me purpose. It's an ambition that gave me a return of investment. It gave me financial returns. It gave me agency. It gave me agency. You see, adults, adult Christian elders should be telling young men like me, this is how you form or create agency in your life, young man. Not one. Not one. Not even any of them on YouTube has spoken of this. Not one. You wonder why young men are so weak and fumbling all over the place? There isn't a single display of masculinity. There is nothing to be a proper example. While all the elders, the baby boomers who sit in the comforts of the assets that they were able to accumulate while the economy was in their favor, the young, hopeless, completely hopeless that they will accumulate any asset. Because we know BlackRock is buying up everything, right? The jobs are rigged. And people are sick and tired of these cheap man managerial jobs anyways. Part of the fiat, crazy, worthless system. Designed to make everybody a slave and to break the spine of whoever wants to actually be upright. The young are tired. And each time they wish to express this disaster that is upon them, what do the baby boomers do? They don't care. They just say, just pray about it. Oh, I hope the Lord won't give you rest. Blah, blah, blah. That is straight up gaslighting. What Christian can actually comfort another now? What? Which one? We're all guilty of sin, but those who knew better, but did not relay the importance on the fact that the young must still live and build. You are more guilty. Did you magically think that the Lord just going to take us away? Did you magically think that these children would come to an understanding of how the world really works? Did you believe that the pastors would be good shepherds for the flock. Not at all. There is no pastor alive right now who is actually feeding the flock correctly. They are only feeding the flock their desperate bias on how they wish the world is turning into that and turning into this. Every new mainstream media outlet saying this or saying that about the left or the right, they run and make a big fat cake about this new narrative, about this new conspiracy. This new conspiracy and put some Bible overlay on it and say this is definitively it. No, it's not. The desperation must end. It must end. I can't be the only one on the whole planet saying this. Can't. I just, I just can't. And I'm tired. You know? I'm tired of waking up in the morning. Despite the significant return of investments in the comic book business that I am working on, I don't care. I don't. I don't want to be here either. But you want to know what makes this feeling even stronger? Simply because so many just don't understand. And because they don't understand, I am left with, indeed, why am I here? People can barely understand what I'm saying. They hear what they want to hear. This is straight up hypocrisy, man. What is this? Like, this is complete madness. You see, there is a verse in Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 3, that reads as, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, 
Also knowing that tribulation works patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. You see, this should be the ultimate message to the young. But not blindly so. Letting them know that we must glory or we should glory in our tribulations. But you see, our tribulations are not always in the fact that we're suffering just because we're Christians. There are pagans and atheists and whatever's suffering equally as we are, not because of their faith, right? This system is anti-human, butchering your soul and your mind, designed to suck you dry of meaning, right? And this tribulation that the young are undergoing, whatever so-called religion they fall under, they are going through the exact same thing. This tribulation is not one specifically for the Christian, but it is for all. All who just know that they have no guarantee for tomorrow and that their tomorrow has been stolen. You see, all this feminism and woke stuff and all this nonsense has destroyed meaning has destroyed a return of investment for the sacrifice of being a man. There is no genuine satisfaction in being a living sacrifice. I'm not even speaking in the sense of being a Christian right now. I'm speaking in the sense of just being a human being. A human being who wants to be noble. Being noble doesn't exist now. It cannot exist. Everything is stupid. Everything's upside down. Right? The Christian must be able to differentiate between suffering for Christ and suffering for just being alive. And as of the longest, I have been suffering mostly for just being alive. I am not suffering for Christ right now because I'm not in Afghanistan being tortured because I worship Jesus. That's suffering for Christ. Being hit with a bag of bricks and onions and smelly stuff, being laughed at and called names because you were Christian, that is tribulation for Christianity. But Christianity... It doesn't even matter now because our suffering is just for the sake of being alive. For being alive, you will suffer. And what can negate this suffering is the understanding of one another through fellowship with the brethren. But these so-called brethren are so jacked in the head, fried beyond belief, traumatized and lost, they are fearful of fellowship. They are fearful of having a conversation with another Christian because they have been tortured by their family, betrayed by their friends, jacked in the head, fried with their understanding of the world, disappointed beyond belief that they will not risk ever again getting involved, vulnerably so, with another brother. Their hearts have gone cold. They have gone cold. And I can't blame them. The Lord will blame them. But I, I understand. What of what my own heart? My heart is getting cold also. I thought, I thought all of this will stop one day. I thought it would end. I thought... It would stop, but it's not going to stop. It's going to stop when I'm dead. All this madness, it'll stop when I'm gone in the grave. And that is a very important fact that young people actually don't understand. 
They cling on to false hope, believing that the squirmish and this confusing phase that they are going through will one day evaporate. And they hold on to that day when it will evaporate. Hold on for 10 years. A 22-year-old believing that by the time he's 28 or 35, all these feelings that he's going through right now, they would have been gone. They are not going to go anywhere. And that is what the elderly should have told them. They should have told them that in order to wash away these feelings of inadequacy, these feelings of not knowing where you're going, you need to build. You need to build, young man. You need to use whatever talent you've been given, assess your circumstance and see what you can build around you. You see, around me here in South Africa, nothing can be built. So what I have built is online. It's on the internet. It can be easily destroyed, I suppose. But nonetheless, I've built something. To no help, of course, to uh, the evangelicals. None whatsoever. Instead, I was someone discouraged me saying, what you're doing seems rather devil-like because they don't understand the art that I do. It is called devil-like. You see, this is discouragement. Because of me, right, so many people in the comic book space, right, have been given direction. And I'm not saying that to brag because what, what is there to brag about? If I'm still in this condition of frustration, what is there to brag about? It's just a reality. That because of me, many have been given a direction now. Because of me, many didn't blow their brains out. They have given me their testimonies, thanking me that you helped me out. And I'm like, cool, great, hallelujah. I wish I could get help. But I see that you have to help yourself. It is very sad that people will not step out of their bias. Step out of it. Stop picking a side. Step out of it. Look at both sides. And see why you pick this side. Because what? It fits the bias. It fits your narrative. It gives you the hope that in five years we'll all be blown to smithereens or raptured or whatever. Enough is enough. Especially what I said about multiple antichrists coming up every decade. Enough is enough. A shame to all elderly Christians. Shame on you. Because it is you who are supposed to tell me this. You were the ones who are supposed to teach me this. Not the other way around. So many have fallen to the wayside. So many have been victims of confusion because the so-called elderly Christians could not separate themselves from their bias. Each time a new leader came about, they said, a new antichrist. Come on. When will it stop? I am tired. I'm so tired. And I feel empty inside. I feel hollow. Absolutely hollow. But my mind tells me there's more work to be done. Even though there'll be no significant return of investment. I still continue to toil. I still continue to feed the flock with tiny, tiny crumbs of bread of life. Tiny. I still pour them little shots of the living water. I still do because the Father's in me. And despite how pathetic and hollow and just useless I feel, 
the Father still dwells within me and he ain't done with me. I feel disconnected from my own body. It's as if it's driving itself. For a moment when I was making lunch, it felt like my spirit left my body and I thought I was gonna collapse, but I didn't. And And these are the conversations. These are the confessions that many Christians need to have. They are not honest with themselves. They do not confess these feelings, those in their fellowship. They do not confess a thing to even the Lord. To somewhat I understand why, because they are fearful. They don't confess to their brothers because they are fearful of being judged harshly. They don't confess to the Lord because I too had stopped confessing because I said to myself, what's the point? It's not like anything would change, right? Why should I confess? You already know I'm jacked up. You already know what I'm thinking. Why should I confess? What's there to confess about? Lord, what, what is really there to confess about? But whoever does not confess carries 10 trillion burdens in their heart and will just drop from a heart attack or a stroke and wake up again to find themselves on a wheelchair only simply because you didn't want to confess. Lighten the load by confessing to the Lord. Lighten the load. It might feel pointless, but it sure as heck not. One thing is for sure, I really don't know what's going to happen anymore. And I really don't care either. I don't. I have become so indifferent to existence itself, but at the same time so frustrated at existence itself. I don't care about it, but at the same time, the bit that I care about fills me with frustration for still being here. You know, others said, many have told me, you should be the president. You should be a pastor. You should be that, you should build this, you should do that. And all those people, well, not all of them, most of them, I should say all of them except one, all of them except one actually contributed, right? They told me to build something. How? I'm here in Africa without a sponsor, what can I build? Oh, you should do that. You should do that. How? Am I some ultra smart genius who has $10 billion to do these ideas that people are suggesting to me? That was gaslighting. People just want to watch from afar, you know, treat you as a hero and live vicariously through you. And when you achieve, they say, we knew you could do it. We were always praying for you. It's just ridiculous, man. Young people are lost and they will continue to be lost. I am not lost, not one bit. But where I'm going is not where I even want to go. But it is the only road that is before me. It's not where I wanted to go. I'm trapped. And I can't turn back, I can't turn right, I can't turn left, I'm trapped, the only way is forward. And I'm not having a good time as I move forward. I just grow colder, 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 and emptier, and emptier, and emptier. And that's it, that's all. That's all. This is the reality. 
I do have things to look forward to at long last after seven years. But all these things that I can look forward to, they're all worldly. I don't really care. They're of the world, despite whatever worldly success I can obtain from it. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. But it is nice to know that I actually have a future now because of my efforts. My efforts. Right? My efforts. So, but despite that, even though I might stand at the top of Mount Everest with a golden trophy, it'll only be for the camera, but inside of like, I don't care. I really don't care. So, from now on, let everyone examine themselves and confess their sins and their true feelings within to the Lord or to their friends. I have made this confession and I feel 10 times even more empty all of a sudden. There is no relief, no catharsis in my confession. None. Only a cold abyss in my chest. And I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. But this is the reality that many prophets surely must have undergone. We know, we know Elijah went through this. It is written. We know Habakkuk questioned, Lord, why? We know Jonah wanted to die and he was allowed to. We know Jeremiah was attacked. All the prophets went through all of this. We know this. We know the Lord himself went to the mountain when they wanted to force him to be king because the people did not understand why he performed those miracles. We know. I suffer partly for the sake of Christ because I continue to do the work that he has been given. But also, my sufferings are caused by just the madness and senselessness of this world. But that's another thing. One thing Western civilization screwed up was what reality actually is. Reality is nothing but suffering. And they built a civilization where they thought they could negate it. And in doing so, created a new type of suffering. They forgot the fact that the Lord cursed this world when Adam and Eve ate the fruit. You can't make things better. It will always fall down again and you always have to pick it up. It can't stay up because this is not heaven. It will always fall again. And all of us who are young believe that it will stay up. And after it has fallen 6,000 times, we begin to wonder, is there a point in picking it up again? And others say, no, there isn't. Then onwards to the drugstore, onwards to the liquor store. Because their father, their grandmother, their grandfather didn't tell them that the world is cursed and nothing is meant to stay up, it will always crumble. And this is something that I have to tell myself from now on, that everything is just meant to fall apart. It's meant to. And despite it falling apart, yet we still must build because building is the only thing that's going to comfort you at night. Because if you live in shambles, you'll feel like shambles. But while your castle is still standing, you will be warm until it falls down again. And then you have to start all over. That is the maddening, absurd cycle of this reality that is cursed. This is what should have been preached to all of us in the churches. But instead it's kumbaya, mambo jumbo, 
yada yada sweet cotton candy Jesus stuff not the real stuff <sighs> I feel better now I hope y'all have something to think about <laughs>